Hello all, Isabella Sebastiani here. I hope you're having a great day and welcome to our discussion on Paolo Freire. Before we get started, I want to note that a phone with a camera that reads QR codes is recommended to get the most out of this experience. If that is not possible for you, then you can open the PowerPoint that I'm presenting on and click the QR code, which you will see in a couple of slides, which should take you to an external page. Now, let's get started. Who is Freire? Freire is a 20th century Brazilian educator and philosopher who was born in 1921 and passed away in 1997. Freire is best known as an advocate of critical pedagogy and critical consciousness and the author of The Pedagogy of the Oppressed and Pedagogy of Hope. His main mojo was that educators and learners are mutually responsible for the teaching and learning process. Before we dive deeper into Freire's work and ideas, I encourage you to pause the video and take a moment to reflect on the following question. What is the purpose of education? Then scan the QR code and post your answer under the prompt on the Padlet. If scanning the QR code does not work, open the PowerPoint and click on the QR code and it should take you directly to the Padlet like this. Here you go. For now, just answer the first question. The other question should be answered towards the end of the presentation when you're prompted to. To Freire, the purpose of education was freedom. With literacy came empowerment and with empowerment came liberation from oppressors. He held that the goal for teaching adults was social change. And to promote social change, educators must become co-learners alongside their students, promoting and taking part in their culture. Through active participation, learners take hold of and pilot their learning, freeing the previously oppressed. Once learners are at the forefront of their learning, critical consciousness may begin. Critical consciousness is the concept of essentially taking in the perspectives of multiple identities. It focuses on an in-depth understanding of the world, liberating the masses from systemic inequity. It is through awareness that motivation is found to intervene reality in order to take action and change it. Its goal is to liberate learners from mimicry, allowing learners to find their own voices. To implement critical consciousness in our own lives, we must open our eyes to the injustices around us. It is through this lens that we can see the imposition of one group upon another and begin to resist it. Through critical pedagogy, educators invite inquiry, inquiry developing critical consciousness. This inquiry and critique of structures of power and oppression leads to agency. Compared to traditional teaching practices, critical pedagogy emphasizes human needs and histories, focusing on the holistic function of education and it is political and multidimensional, insisting that issues of social justice and democracy are not distinct from teaching and learning. It takes courage to stray away from going with the flow, but what an amazing challenge for educators to include critical consciousness in their own practice. As said in Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, knowledge emerges only through invention and reinvention through the restless, impatient, continuing, hopeful and free human beings pursue in the world, with the world and with each other. Following Furry's ideas allows us to strengthen community bonds and change how people communicate with each other, focusing on dialogue and collaboration to achieve greater humanization. Furry emphasized that learning is not just for students, undermining the power dynamics that hold some people above others that is perpetuated by the banking model of education. The teacher is not the keeper of all knowledge. Rather, the teacher and the students learn together and from each other. Additionally, through critical consciousness, learners should be able to identify an inequality or injustice through critical thought and things they read, see, and hear. Asking questions such as, was this fair? Is this just? Was there equality? 
helps, develops criti helps develop critical consciousness. These ideas can be discussed collaboratively in the classroom. A person with high critical consciousness is able to actively reflect on and change problematic conditions. Freeing the oppressed. According to Freire, denying inquiry denies learners the opportunity to mature into autonomous individuals in society who critically reflect on the world to make it a better place. That is why it is so important to encourage curiosity in the classroom and beyond. With the following implications in mind, I invite you to scan the QR code and answer the following question. How can ed educators integrate Freire's ideas in the classroom? Similar to before, if you cannot scan the QR code, I invite you to click the QR code on the PowerPoint presentation to be directed to the Padlet. Here are some examples of how to integrate Fairy's ideas in the classroom. Using first or preferred names, including having learners calling you by your first name, is a great tool to humanize the learning experience and level the playing field, breaking down the hierarchical structure of the classroom. Additionally, knowing your students by name provides the atmosphere with warmth and individualizes the learner. Another example is analyzing any textbook, video, article, or any other resource used in the classroom for a representation of both sexes, multiple genders, ethnicities, and socioeconomic perspectives. All identities deserve to feel seen, especially in the classroom. By admitting that teachers do not know everything and owning up to and apologizing for mistakes, one further humanizes educators. Learners come with a variety of expertise and experiences and have a lot to offer. Use this to everyone's advantage by using their knowledge to support others' learning. Along with admitting that educators are not all knowing, apologize when mistakes that are in your control are made. Finally, through developing projects that allow learners to follow their own curiosities and present their findings to the class, much like this current project, is a fabulous way to facilitate learning, creating an alongside experience between the educator and the learner. Additional ways to integrate Furry's ideas in the classroom are to check your biases and watch your language. It is common to find language in the classroom that perpetuates the banking model of education. Even the word teacher versus student creates a separation of power. I myself no longer call my students student. Instead, I use the word learner because everybody is learning. Furry's contributions to education and educational philosophy are profound for those brave enough to adopt the concept of critical consciousness into their pedagogy. I hope you enjoyed this mini lecture and feel free to email me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I look forward to reading your thoughts and ideas in the Padlet. For now, have a great rest of your evening. And quickly, here is the reference list. All right, see you later.